Hello and welcome to How to Econ. Let's talk about the production possibilities frontier. Just as individuals cannot have everything they want and must make choices, a country or society cannot have everything it wants either. Because a society has limited resources such as labor, land, capitals, and raw materials, there's a limit to the quantities of goods and services it can produce. The constraints a society faces is called the Production Possibilities Frontier, or the PPF. The Production Possibilities Frontier is a diagram that shows the productively efficient combinations of two products that an economy can produce given the resources it has available for producing those two products. The slope of the Production Possibilities Frontier shows the opportunity cost. Remember that opportunity cost is the value of the next best alternative. For example, you can either watch my videos or go to work for $20 an hour. If you choose to watch my videos, you sacrifice the $20 you could have earned if you choose to go to work. That $20 is your opportunity cost of watching my videos for an hour even though my videos are free. Now. Let's take a look at an example of a production possibilities frontier, or the PPF. Suppose a society desires two products, healthcare and education. The production possibilities frontier on the screen shows a trade-off between devoting social resources to healthcare and devoting them to education. This graph has two axes. The vertical axis shows the amount of healthcare that this society can have, and the horizontal axis shows the amount of education that it can have. To have more of a service, this society has to spend more resources on that service and spend less resources on the other service because the society has limited resources. For example, at point A, all resources go to healthcare, no resource go to education. At point B, most resources go to healthcare and little resources go to education. At point D, most resources go to education and little go to healthcare, so the level of healthcare in this society is very low, while the level of education is very high. At point F, all resources go to education and nothing go to healthcare, so the level of healthcare is zero. A society could choose to produce any combination of healthcare and education on the production possibilities frontier. It does not have enough resources to produce outside of the PPF. In this example, the only way society can obtain more education is by giving up some healthcare. Therefore, the PPF is downward sloping from left to right. For instance, to move from point A to point B, this society has to give up a little healthcare in order to spend on education. To move from point B to point C, or from point C to D, the society gives up a little more healthcare and obtains a little more education. As we add more resources to education, moving from left to right along the horizontal axis, the original gains are fairly large but gradually diminished. Think about it. If very few resources are currently committed to education, there are not many teachers and schools available, then an increase in resources for education can bring significant improvement for education. On the other hand, if a large number of resources are already committed to education, there are many good teachers and excellent schools available for free already then committing additional resources to education will bring relatively small gains because there's not much need to be improved. The same pattern applies for healthcare. As we add more resources to healthcare, the original gains are fairly large, but again gradually diminish. Think about it. If there are not many doctors and hospitals available, a little investment in healthcare system can improve it significantly. But as more and more good doctors and hospitals become available everywhere, adding more resources to healthcare would not improve it much. This is what's called law of diminishing returns. As additional increments of resources to producing a good or service are added, 
the marginal benefit from those additional increments will decline. The study of economics does not presume to tell a society what choice it should make along its production possibilities frontier. However, it can point out that some choices are better than others. This observation is based on the concept of efficiency. Efficiency often means there's no waste. In economics, there are two types of efficiency, productive efficiency and allocative efficiency. Productive efficiency means it is impossible to produce more of one good without decreasing the quantity of another good. All choices along a given PPF, like points B, C, or D, display productive efficiency, but point R does not. Point R is inside the PPF curve. That means not all resources are being used to produce the combination of healthcare and education at point R. That means at point R, it is possible to produce more healthcare or education or both without decreasing the quantity of any of them. Allocative efficiency means a particular allocation of goods and services that a society desires the most. How to determine what a society desires is a big question and is often discussed in political science, sociology and economics classes. At its most basic, Allocative efficiency means producers supply the quantity of each product that consumers desire while trying to eliminate negative externalities on the environment and society, such as pollution, exploitation, or income disparity. While every society must choose how much of each good or service it should produce, it does not need to produce every single good it consumes. How much of a good a country decides to produce often depends on how expensive it is to produce versus buying it from another country. As we saw earlier, a country's PPF shows the trade-off between devoting resources to produce one good versus another. Countries tend to have different opportunity costs of producing a specific good, either because of different climates, geography, technology, or skills. Suppose two countries, Vietnam and the United States, need to decide how much peanut and coffee they will produce. Due to its climatic conditions and technology, Vietnam can produce two tons of coffee per acre, but almost no peanut. That means to produce a very little amount of peanut per acre, Vietnam has to give up two tons of coffee that could have been grown on that acre. So for Vietnam, the opportunity cost for growing a little amount of peanut per acre is two tons of coffee. In contrast, the United States can produce three tons of peanut per acre, but almost no coffee. That means in order to produce three tons of peanut per acre, the United States does not have to give up much coffee. So for the United States, the opportunity cost of growing a lot of peanut per acre is just a little amount of coffee. In this example, the U.S. has lower opportunity costs in growing peanut than Vietnam. When a country can produce a good at a lower opportunity cost than another country, we say that that country has a comparative advantage in that good. In the example of Vietnam and the United States, the United States has comparative advantage in growing peanut because it has to give up less coffee per acre to grow peanut. Comparative advantage is not the same as absolute advantage. Absolute advantage is when a country can produce more of a good than other countries. A country might have absolute advantage in a lot of things. That means it could produce more of many goods than other countries. But it cannot have comparative advantage in producing all of them. When countries engage in trade, they specialize in the production of the goods in which they have comparative advantage and trade part of that production for goods in which they do not have comparative advantage. With trade, manufacturers produce goods where the opportunity cost is lowest, so total production increases, benefiting both trading parties. That was an introduction about the production possibilities frontier. 
You will find more explanation and examples about comparative advantage in my other videos about international trade. The link for that video is in the description box. Please check it out. Thanks for watching and bye for now.